Well, I, uh, I was really thinking about what should actually my title be, and I came up with boring statistics because statistics are usually boring. So it's a simple. Just, just to give you a warning, uh, this, this is a new software uh, that appeared on Monday so that everybody actually understands what we are doing here. You as a dropping bombs, it's not war, but guessing a computer perhaps it is. Um, the US government sure has an interesting way of defining war these days. Just a few months after the Obama administration played war games with the public by insisting that airstrikes in Libya were just kinetic military action and not acts of war, the Pentagon has now come on the record stating that it will treat all acts of cyber hacking against the US as acts of war. So uh, the stage is set for an interesting discussion afterwards. <laughs> just an expansion of the crypto laws. Yeah. Well, um, we did a passwords 10 in December last year. Don't ask me about the name. I just that was like the lazy name, just passwords 10. Okay. Well, there we are. Uh, and you will find the archives, both the presentations in in uh, MP4 recordings as well as most of the presentations in PDF formats. It's available at the FTP server of the Institute of Informatics at the university. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we were at a place in Norway called Finse, uh, where there were several uh, really interesting uh, talks in, in cryptography and information security. And I did also a talk there for like almost three hours on passwords. So eventually, if you could, if you would be that interested in passwords, you can go online and, and have a check and uh, look at uh, look at that presentation as well. And we also create passwords eleven as soon as we are done more or less today, and put out the new questions presentations there as well in the next couple of days. So, I want to start with talking about uh, the exception. Uh, the exception is that I've been doing now like my own personal password research for, uh, well, uh, at least 10 years now. And this is data based on an active directory domain, a Windows domain, from somebody in a galaxy far, far away. I can't say much more than that. And during all the years that I've been doing penetration testing and password cracking and password statistics, this single domain stands out from the rest in many different ways. So I wanted to give you some statistics based on, on this domain, this company, um, first. So there are, you know, there are some default uh, Windows parameters that you can normally uh, configure, like minimum length, change frequency, password age, how often can you actually change your password, Password history, account logout, recent logon count, and logout duration. And in this domain, at the time that I extracted the data, the minimum password length was three. <coughs> change frequency was 90 days. You had to change your password every 90 days. You could change your password immediately, so just by you know, oh, I have to change my password change it, and you can change it again, and again, and again, and again. And one of the war stories that I, I think I told this one at Passwords 10 as well, is that I actually, uh, a couple of years ago, I went to one of my colleagues who uh, did a program, and I asked him, I got some data that I want to analyze. And what I'm looking for is that in my data, I can see uh, the password, and I can see the date on, uh, and time that the password was changed. And I'm looking for traces saying that, like in, 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 in January and in February, uh, the password is the same password, but the date and timestamp has been updated. And he looked at me and said, why are you looking for that? Well, because of the password age being set to zero, I'm looking for people that every 60 or 90 days will change their password for like, they will change it 10 times or 20 times, and then they will just change it back to the password they are always using. And the fun thing is, my colleague turned completely red in his face <laughs> and said, well, there's at least one who does that. <laughs> and that was by pure chance, because I didn't know that he was doing that. But he was. 
every 90 days he would change his password for, for like, change it like 10 something times, and then he went back to using his same password as he was using all the time. So there's a, you know, if, if passwords are a struggle to you, that's one, one of the tricks that you could actually use. So password history was zero, meaning that when you are forced to change your password, you could just enter the same password again. You actually didn't have to go through a loop. My password is password, and oh, you have to change your password. Okay, my new password is password. Okay, so the system. Period. Really simple. You had five attempts to log on to an account before the account was locked. But after 30 minutes, you would have another five attempts to log on. And if you did log out of your account, in 30 minutes, it would be automatically, automatically it would be opened up again using the account lockout policy. The only really, and it, you also have the disabled parameter that you can set for Windows accounts. But that again, that means that there's an administrator going in and saying that this account is now disabled. But that is something else in this. This is part of the password policy. So this was the policy. Now, also on the uh, written policy side, I should also say that this company didn't have a written security policy. They didn't have a written password policy. And they had never, ever done any kind of security awareness training for their employees whatsoever. And that's all important background information for, for these next slides. Also, looking at the number of accounts, in the Windows domain there were 632 accounts. Now this could be humans, this can also be test service accounts, uh, uh, shell accounts and so on. So it doesn't really say much about the number of people in this domain, which is kind of important to me to, to hide at this moment. Now, for the username equals password, please make a guess. 100. 100? That much? Huh? Well, 193. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say 100 was a pretty wide guess. Yeah, well, it was actually 193. Username equals password. Password now expires parameter. <coughs> You can set that on your account so you don't have to change your password. 300. Oh, uh, just 215, I'm sure. <laughs> just the others didn't figure out the option exists. <laughs> <laughs> well, not everybody was actually the domain administrator, so they couldn't, they couldn't do it and set that parameter on their, onto their own account. So there were 215 domain administrators. No, there were not 215. Uh, the men on this, but uh, you can you can share one of yeah. The one a typical thing is that service accounts, accounts not being used by humans, they will very typically have password never expire set on them. Uh, it means less hassle. Now the problem is that like uh, uh, service accounts used for uh, doing backups, antivirus control, and so on. Those accounts will typically have domain administrator account uh, uh, access, or at least uh, local administrator access to like the domain controls and so on. So that uh, those accounts are really really important to actually protect with good passwords, and they should be changed frequently. Now, one of the things that I'm doing, and this is a little bit country specific, I think, is that I'm also looking at uh, for how long has the password actually been there and uh, have it, haven't been changed. And in Norway, I'm doing usually 14 months, because then it, we have the option of you could be on, on fraternity, fraternity, maturity. Maturity. Maturity leave, yeah. And you can, in Norway, you can go on maturity leave. Maternity leave. Maternity leave for up to one year. And then you can add, add a little bit of holiday as well. So I'm using 14 months just to, to have a look at it. And the interesting is that 305 accounts out of 632, haven't changed the password for more than 14 months or more. Yeah. Are these all active accounts? Were any of these disabled? Or? All of them were active accounts. None of them were disabled. Okay. Absolutely none of them were disabled. Yeah. Exception number three. 
entropy. Letters only in the passwords, so digits only, letters and digits. Let's start with letters. How many passwords do you think only contains letters? Well, a nice for digits. <laughs> 409. <laughs> only digits, 9. Letters and digits, 201. Letters and specials, 1. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably the support account default. Something like that, yes. Yeah. And three, that actually does letters, digits, and specials. Now, I'm saying letters here because this is based on the uh, Longmon uh, passwords. So we are at uppercase only here. But this is what it looks like. So going back to NIST SP800-63, which talks about entropy and passwords and stuff. Yeah, well, you have... Yep. How many accounts were there in total? Did you 632. Even more interesting is to look at the password length distribution. Any wild guesses? Starting with two, three, four, five, six. How do you think this is going to look like? The minimum length requirement is three. There is one password that consists of two letters. <laughs> There's 21 passwords that are of length 3. There are 10 at length 4. And there are 49 at length 5. And then suddenly, it looks like this. So how can you have one at length 3? Is it not enforced, this password? No, because this is one of the things that I'm really talking about uh, everywhere, is that there are many, many people, oh, security guys, that does password policies on paper. And they have this, like, this thought that when they change their pa password policy or their security policy, they can just publish it on the intranet. And the next day, the entire organization has just automatic, automatically changed all the systems to be compliant with the new security policy. Now, you could be on leave here for all kinds of reasons. And when you update the policy, even the technical policy, still it won't apply before you change your password the next time. Eventually, you could say that tomorrow we are changing our password policy. So tomorrow at like 12 noon or something, everybody has to change their password, period even if it's just like a couple of minutes since the last time you changed your password. Yeah, that's not very popular. Yeah. And in this again, going back to the 14 months plus uh, age passwords, one of the things that I found in this that was the, the oldest password hadn't been changed for more than seven years. And that account actually also had domain administrative access and had password assets. Password. <laughs> so getting access was like, you know, even easier than actually freezing down some memory chips. <laughs> also, for the exception part there is that uh, this is probably the biggest exception I've ever seen when it comes to looking at the length distribution compared to the minimum requirements. Because in most environments, I would say almost all environments, what I will see usually is that if we have a minimum length, then you will see immediately that most of the accounts will have passwords that are either of minimum length or maybe one or two characters more in length. While the gap here from three to actually go to six and seven is much bigger. Now the reason of this, of course, if you haven't guessed it already, is pretty simple. People are using words, normal words like summer as an example, or winter, or password as a password. Now there are many more words available that are of length 5, 6, 7, 8 characters that are of length 2, 3, 4 that it will become like natural to use as your password. And that's uh, quite an interesting observation because I have never seen this anywhere else. And again, this company had never done any kind of awareness training. They didn't have a written policy. They never tried to 
impose any kind of security policy onto the users at all. Al? At what time of year did you do this audit? The question is, of course, if you did it around Christmas time in Norway, I would think that three characters like the password would be more popular. It, it was in January, February. Okay. Yeah. So it should apply. Which year? Why is three mm. popular? Because the Norwegian word for Christmas is Yule. Ah. Yeah. Three characters. Three letters. Yeah. What was the naming standard for usernames? I I don't think I should go into the details on that one. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm asking since you Standard since you is said the best that, answer. Uh, you said uh, that there were so, so many that had their username equal to their password. Mm. Uh, but did you check for username 01, etc., those combinations? Is okay. that one of the reasons why you have specific pieces <coughs> instead of characters? Yeah, well, I, again, going back to like the, the number of pass, uh, all passwords that consists only of letters and so on, it, it's, uh, it, well, yeah, you can probably figure out parts of the username creation policy used. And also, uh, I have done some modifications to this one, but the interesting thing here is that this says top 10 most frequent combinations of five characters. And the number 10 combination is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which happens to be the most, second most common password in the entire world based on the analysis of the Rock U password list that you probably know by now. And there were seven across that analysis, as I told you. There were nine passwords that consisted only of digits. Seven of them was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Which again is also a, a really big exception for because in, in almost all environments that I have ever done password cracking, and, and I'm also always talking about organizations and private companies, uh, you won't find passwords that only consists of letters or only of digits. Almost, or I should say, everyone has implemented uh, complexity requirements by default, more or less, on Windows. But this, again, is the exception. So, that was the exception. Now, let's have a look at the 176. Yeah. Yep. Can I just ask, to whom did you give the presentation of these results? To um, the IT director, who was also the head of security, and to uh, an internal auditor, external auditor, and one member of the executive staff. And what were their reactions? They were wondering if this was worse than any worse than others that I had seen. Okay, so they didn't care. <laughs> well, I told them that I have never seen anything <clears throat> as crappy as this. And they were like, okay, well, um, yeah, but I don't think anybody has hacked us before. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, well, I really have to inform you that you haven't turned on any kind of logging in your Windows domain, so it's uh, it's kind of difficult to actually decide whether you've been hacked or not. But there were there, no, there were no logging uh, at all turned on for the Active Directory at that time. So they are better today, much better. So. Looking at 176 humans, one of the things that you can do in Windows, which could be uh, a big problem if somebody actually manages to compromise you, is that if you do you the, if you do uh, turn on the password history parameter, like you can't use reuse like your five or ten last passwords, those last passwords that, uh, that you have been the previous passwords that you have been using will that also be stored in the Windows uh, registry. So if you do like, you, if you use Kane enable for Windows, then you can say that you not only want the current password hash, but you also want all historical hashes that are stored in the registry. So this is from then from a, um, this is then based on uh, a domain where I've been dumping 
both the current password hash and going back as much as 23 generations back in time. Now that of course, one of the things that I'm still a little unsure about when it comes to Windows is that um, Windows has uh, uh, has an option on, on, on the password age uh, saying that you can't change your password in like you need to wait for like one day or two or three, four days maybe. So there's a counter there and there's a registry uh, entry saying that this password was last set at this date and this time. But I don't know if that information is available for the historical hashes as well. I don't think it is. Uh, and I have yet to ask somebody to try to figure it out for me. Uh, but I don't think it is. So uh, I can't really tell you if these generations here, if they are actually, they, they could be like one, two, three, four days old, or this could actually be like looking back in time, several years back in time. But again, I have, I can't remember to have ever seen any kind of research or paper describing analysis of password changes over time, looking at specific users or accounts, and looking at the password change for generation by generation. Now here's the thing, our normal assumption is that if you're using password one as your password, you would say that well that's probably going to be password two, that would be the next, your next password, and then password three, password four, and so on. And my, my, my opinion, if you could compromise this kind of data from a Windows Active Directory, if you are able to compromise like the current password, and the current password is password one, then you would say that, well, the next time I'm going to break in, I will try, try password two as an example. But if you have like a generation, several generations of passwords for a single user, if they then get compromised and they force everybody to change the passwords, you will either have historical information that will make it, make it even more easy for you to figure out what will the next password be, or at least you will have a pattern analysis. So if you could have some idea what kind of password they are using, then you will also know what kind of uh, uh, pattern they will be using to update their password. And of course, adding plus one at the end, like password one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, is pretty common. Even more common is actually to see a normal word and two or four digits at the end. Not one or three digits, but two or four. Which, again, would normally be a, a date, a year, uh, a, a birth date, or something like that. And nowadays, I would say anywhere, if there's a corporation, if there's an organization, we'd say, a thousand or more user accounts, you can just try out Samba 11 and Samba 2011 with a capital S, rest lowercase, and, and 11 or 2011 at the end, and you'll get it, period. It could be that easy, yeah? Maybe a silly question, but if you have this active directory access, whatever this means, you get to see the real passwords, not the hashes? No, I, I do extract the hashes and then I do password tracking. All right. Yeah. They are not salty, right? No, that's the, the fun thing no, about Windows. No, no salty. Passwords are salted. Even the more secure in Vista and Seven, where they drop the landman hash. The MS hash passwords are hashed. They are all salted. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's the, not really relevant. The NT hash passwords, um, you convert to UCS2 dash little Indian is the character set encoding, which is basically UTF-16. If you take the MV4 of that, and you store that. <laughs> yes, the MV4. Yeah. Right. And we still haven't eliminated the landman, which is case insensitive and has other problems. So then I am looking at these 176 humans. I <coughs> can see the monster distribution of their passwords. And I've been able to crack, uh, well, almost all of them. And here's what, you know, what I was talking about is that when well, there is actually one account or one password that ha actually has length seven. So it's not actually in compliance with the password policy. And most probably that is due to the fact that the password policy had been changed. But the password haven't been changed, at least not yet. And as you can see, the majority is actually on at a minimum, more or less. And then we're going 
downward, so to be more, a little bit more complex and advanced passwords. But still, length 15, I've been able to track that. Yeah. Are there any passwords that you could not recover just from now? Uh, in, in this, on this data set, uh, no. I could track all of them. It uh, took me a couple of days in total, but uh, yeah. I um, I um, I like to tell this story. Uh, Jan Felik, uh, my colleague Jan Felik. Um, um, I'm playing this little game with with some of my colleagues. Uh, it's like you know, can you crack my password and. Uh, and uh, Thomas also knows uh, this little game. And uh, sometimes I've, I've been checking up uh, on, on colleagues. They have asked me, and uh, like, uh, uh, you can't crack this pair. Uh, it's uh, one of the passwords I've seen during the years. <laughs> um, uh, and one of the things, I, I, I did crack Jan Felix's passwords uh, over and over again. And I also told him a little bit on, on, on the workings of Windows and, and the hash algorithms that are being used. And I'm not sure if he actually told me that he had set a new password, but well, I was doing password cracking, and there was one password where the uh, Lama hash were, were not available. So I just knew that most probably uh, the password is 15 characters or longer. And like brute forcing a 15 plus character password is like, it's in a way it's really not feasible. But what I did, I was using a, a word list that has been created by um, entering all the words found in the 1,000 largest wikis on the internet, including Wikipedia. So it's like a word list of like 750 megabytes, and that's quite a large collection of words. And I was churning through that and applying 00, 0, 01, 02, 03 up to 99 at the end of each and every word in that word list. And suddenly I got, I found one password. And I'm, I'm not sure about the exact length. Omega was to, uh, 32 characters or something, 32 or 34. I'm not sure, I don't remember exactly, but it was like, whoa, is somebody actually using that? Because it's a, it's a phrase from an old television program in Norway. And they had like 99 or something applied at the end. And I just, I just saw it and I thought, I, I think I have an idea who this might be. And then I looked up the username and of course it was Jan Felic. And I gave him a call and said, you need to change your password Jan Felic. And he was like, okay, so you did that one as well. Now I don't really know what to do. Okay. Quite fun. Per position entropy, this is also one of the things that I think is, is pretty cool to have a look at. First, uh, for these passwords, looking at the normal, which is then case insensitive, the number of different characters used per position in the passwords. <coughs> and you will see that the largest entropy is in position one, and then we go downwards before we go a little bit up and down again. And, like, and this is very typical. Position 1 and position 7 and 8 will usually have the highest entropy, the highest number of different characters used in that position in the password. While going out to like position 11, 12, 13, 14, then you will usually see just digits. And then the entropy is really dropping down. Now this is the case insensitive graph. And if we do make it case sensitive, it looks like this. Pretty much the same. You can see even easier that high entropy, position one, going down, up again on position seven and eight. And I, I have a feeling that every time I do this now, in different domains and so on, this is what you get. And to me, this applies if you're going to brute force an entire key space. This will at least give you some logic on what to try first. <laughs> but in this data set, are the majority of the passwords words or variations of words? Okay, because 
um, people, if, if you ask people to make up password, they can take a word or they can make a sentence. So there, there are different techniques. That, mm -hmm. you know, most people, if they're given the choice, will just take a word and hand a number or something somewhere, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so, but that has, um, because if it is words, then you will have consonants, vowel consonants, which would be more or less that pattern. Mm -hmm. Now only nine vowels. I would say that most of the passwords are words. But then again, I, I, uh, on my personal blog, I did a blog post on what's a word list. Blo yeah, the name of the blog post is what's a word list. And a word list could, I, I called, you know, I called the Norwegian government and asked them, what's a word list? And they said, well, that, that would be a Norsk bookmål, a new, a new Norsk bookliste eventually also in, in Sami language. That's a word list. Words that we use in our language, period. That's a word list. Now, to us as password hackers or crackers or whatever we are, security professionals, a word list, of course, is something much bigger. It could be all kinds of variations of words with digits applied, special characters applied in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, and so on. But I would say for most parts that people will be using words or names and then digits or some kind of special characters applied at the end. One of the funny observations is, is that it's very hard to find anybody who starts the password with digits or special characters. That is very, very rare. Everybody applies digits or let's say the complexity part of the password is usually applied at the end of the password. Another question, have you done the same analysis on say uh Norwegian list of words, this, uh, or or any natural language, would that be look the same for up to ten types of words? No, I haven't done that. And uh, just going back to Finsa, both Professor Tor Hellesat and also from Jøvik and and University in Stavanger, uh, they well, they asked me if I would be interested in supervising like a master's student or something, because I have like way more ideas on how to do analysis. First of all, I can't do any kind of programming at all. I don't know Perl, I don't know anything. I can barely do a batch script in ms long, long time ago. So I got all these ideas, but I need help from somebody else to you know, do the analysis. I'm interested in talking to psychologists on, on how people are making patterns in the brain. I'm talking to Oh, I would like to talk to uh, uh, anthropologists who uh, also uh, 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 talk about uh, social behavior and how we do things in our you know, normal life. I'm interested in looking at distribution of, let's say, positive words used in passwords like summer, that's a positive word for most of us, but for at least for me, winter is a negative word. So just looking at passwords to see if they are using positive words and negative words, or let's say just neutral words that doesn't really mean anything to them at all. If that could be done, it could be really cool to do. And also, this one, unique number of characters used in the passwords. So there is actually one or two passwords that have, even though the password is probably seven or eight characters or more in length, there are only four distinct characters used in that one. While in most of them, actually, you will see that there are seven or eight or nine different characters used in password. Yep. Uh, could you go back to the previous one? Uh, you said something about uh, starting off with a word and then continuing with a digit. Yeah. Uh, when do you write a password that is not compliant with the password policy in Windows? You're presented with a text that describes the policy. Mm -hmm. That policy describes, for instance, uh, it needs to contain the one characters. Mm -hmm. Then it says something about digits and special characters. Yeah. If you were to reverse the, those to the left positives, which you can't, uh, might the result be different. And it's another not topic for our <laughs> and another topic for master students, no <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, no, 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 not not by GPO. You have to actually do some uh, programming uh, also. Uh, you some other yeah. registry hacking. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, but for Windows, you can also do your own password filters. 
instead of the uh, default password filter. Because one of the one of the really really big problems or challenges, big challenges of implementing a password policy at the technical level is that you want some kind of same password policy, but but still you want to prevent bad passwords from being used. Now, implementing a decent password policy could sound pretty easy to do, but it's very, very difficult if you are to block uh, or disallow bad passwords from happening, because that is very easy to do even if you have a really strong password policy. Password one isn't really a good password but it will be complied with almost all password policies you can find in the entire world. There have been uh, studies, I can't remember who it was, maybe it's just like, who said that uh, how about instead of just having the policy that says the shape of the password, also banning the most popular passwords, yeah. having a kind of blacklist yeah. of stuff. Do you do that? Is that done in, in that the domain that you're analyzing? Uh, uh, it's not something that's built in no. Windows. No, there, there are the tool. default Windows complexity requirements, yeah. But there are no blocking on that. I also done a blog post because Twitter is one of those who actually have a block list of passwords that you're not allowed to use. And the list is like 120 passwords or something. And it was actually discovered because you could see it in clear text in the JavaScript on the login page. So the list came, became public like that. And that list is like, well, it, it, it it maybe do reflect the passwords used by people on services, but there really is no password policy present at all. But it, it, it is nowhere nearby anything that resembles an organizational or, or, or public company uh, password policy. Also, again, circumventing that, you can still do a really bad password while still being compliant with the policy of, of Twitter. So one of the things that I've, I've done also, I've done a, um, a blog post suggesting a, a dynamic blocking scheme for blocking uh, bad passwords from happening. Now it really won't block bad passwords, but it will prevent lots of users of having the same password. So if somebody do SQL injection against you uh, as an example and you do uh, salting, even with salting then you can eventually be able to block lots of users having the same password. Because one of the problems that I see is that help desk, which is there to help you as a user, they are actually the biggest single source for bad passwords. Because if they are to create 100 new accounts for 100 new employees starting on Monday, everybody will be given the same password in most cases. Because that's easy to do. Password formats, and here we are at the case sensitive versions. Uppercase, lower, 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 lower case, number, number of digits, as if you want. And here you have the variation which is not that common, uh, three digits, and the much more common again with four digits at the end. Also, four digits, two digits, four digits, four, four, one digit again, which is not so common as yet. And the fun thing here is that based on, well, I, I've done this kind of statistics for many more accounts and passwords than just 176. Uh, I'll get back to that. But the fun thing is that on the free rainbow tables project where James is one of the head developers, uh, we are now pretty close, pretty close to finishing a rainbow table set for NTLM that is a hybrid uh, rainbow table set, which will cover passwords that would include this kind of construction and also this kind of construction. I checked it's up to length 11. Up to and including length 11. So it's, it doesn't cover the entire key space, but I guess it will be able to, in even an organizational or corporate environment, with complex, uh, complexity requirements enabled, I think that rainbow table set alone will be able to do like 50% or more of the passwords up to and including length 11. And then it gets kind of scary because show me anyone who have a password policy today saying that your password on Windows should be like length 11 or 12 or even longer than that. Most companies are length 6 and 7, 
sum r at length eight. Okay. I found powers to ten after we released our release eight set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also. <sighs> yeah. Also, uh, and this is again thanks to Jan Feld again his excellent Perl coding. Uh, I can also get out statistics on when the current password was changed. So you can do uh, heat mapping of it uh, as an example. I'm saying that for these 176 uh, people, like between nine and ten in the in the morning, they will usually change their password. While between six and seven, five, six, seven, eight in the uh, in the evening, they normally don't do any password uh, resets or anything like that. So we really got to change the uh, <laughs> Yeah, that would be me. And the explanation for this is that, oh, that, that one, yeah. <laughs> um, the explanation for this one is that these 176 people are all domain administrators, Windows domain administrators. Oh. Yeah, all of them are. Or well, they were at some point in time somewhere in the galaxy, I should well, say. We could make uh, IDS rules based on uh, strange people changing passwords in the middle of the night. That's an example, yes, <laughs> you could, yeah. Pattern, human behavior. So, I, uh, also have this one. It could be interesting to have a look at it if it is well if the reds or the blondes or maybe the those with black hair or those with not that much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, or, or should I say we could look for like uh, a highly subjective of course, if it is the beautiful people or the not so beautiful people that have the best passwords. And uh, so I want to do a bit of statistics on that because uh, in some cases I actually have uh, data that enables me to do this. So I can couple passwords to the way you look. So I'm going to do a little uh, bit on that, but time is up, so that will be next time. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and of course a little bit a uh, piece of Dilbot as, as well, so uh, the fun thing about statistics. <laughs> yeah. Questions?